It's actually insane to see how the narrative has flipped from last weekend when Hamza Chemayev went out there and absolutely dominated Robert Whitaker in the first round. All of a sudden, Sean Strickland is not next in line. Hamza Chemayev is leapfrogging him and looks like he's going to get the next title shot. What excites me right now is getting in there and beating Hamza Chemayev. That would be first prize. That's what I want. If it's Hamza, you think you're strong, you think you're powerful, you have not felt anything. So yeah, we're going to talk about how that narrative has flipped within the course of a couple of interviews from Drickis Duplessis and also how the community has just like jumped on the bandwagon of this is the next fight. This has to be the next fight. It does seem very interesting in terms of how people's opinions can flip flop or change or mutate or I guess grow over the course of a couple of weeks. You do also take into account the short term thinking of these type of opinions because it wasn't so long ago that people were saying that Sean Strickland won. 100% won that fight versus Drickis Duplessis and that he needed a rematch and must have the rematch and everyone seemed to be on board with that. I definitely think he won the fourth. Do you think he won the fifth? I don't know, man. The fifth I seemed like it was so. Sean was landing more he shots. He was whiffing a lot. Yeah. Look at the copy strike numbers, too. Sean Land has shit ton more punches. Right down the middle. I had it uh, two to two going into the last round and I thought uh, Strickland won the last round. And like the unlikely source of Brendan Schaub sparking controversy this week, posing a real dilemma for Dana White in terms of whether or not Hamza Chemayev can actually fight in the US. Or is it a case of whoever the champion is, Drickis or Sean Strickland, if that fight goes ahead, they'll have to go to Abu Dhabi to fight. We've had debunkings in the last week where Hamza on the run up to 308 talked about, I've traveled to the UK, I'm traveling to Australia, I can actually travel anywhere, there's no real problem with it. Dana White has come out and kind of disparaged any worries that people had around the fact that Hamza wasn't going to make it into the country at all and he kept this bullshit like arbitrary statement of he's fought here before he's fought in vegas he's fought in florida he's talking about 2021 and 2022 yeah he hasn't had any real bad visa problems uh hamzat We've had Hamza in the States. Last time Kamsat Jamaya fought in the US was 2022. And a lot of people believe that there's really sinister reasons as to why. So let's have a little listen to what Brendan Schaub had to say. What's going on behind the scenes with Hamza that a lot of people don't know about? That Chechen dictator, his two sons were his cornermen. Do you want that to be the face of the middleweight division, one of the faces of the UFC, knowing there's these ties to this horrible dictator? And not just ties, not like, well, no, they hang out after his wins and he throws parties for him, gives him land. No, no, no. He's, he's in them. He's in the fam. So look, we've covered the Hamza Chemayev and Kadyrov stuff before. Not really going to go into too much in depth. But Shab isn't wrong. We can see here that the Chechen warlord Ramzan Kadyrov's sons, Ali and Adam, are Kamzat's corner for UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi. So Shab isn't like pulling this stuff out of thin air. And he also does pose a really good question in terms of Kamzat. I loved what Kamzat did last weekend. I loved that whole performance. I loved what he did on the run up to that. All the press that he did when he talked about his mental health, when he talked about struggling that he was having with his family and operations and I think it actually gave a lighter side to that like vicious persona that he puts out there I actually backed him a little bit more going into the fight and look I've called him out in the past for missing weight being a little bit disrespectful and I wouldn't say exposed but possibly not looking the best against Gilbert Burns and even Kamara Usman. I know that other people give him huge credit for going in there doing that. But listen, it's very subjective in terms of your opinions on UFC fighters and what they do in the octagon. But I really did love what he did last week and I would like to see him get the title shot. As everybody knows, I think that Sean Strickland pretty much edged that fight with Ricky Duplessis. Not enough to be like a dominant winning defending champion or anything like that. But I do think he edged it and I do think the stuff that he says outside of the octagon does affect the opinions of judges, the UFC in general. So I'm, I'm on record saying that. Do I think that he deserves a rematch over Hamza Chemayev? No, I don't think he does. And I don't think that anybody right now wants to see Drickis Duplessis fighting Sean Strickland again. But we also have to look at what comes with Hamza Chemayev getting the next title shot and possibly becoming the next champion. I don't think he beats Drickis. That's just my opinion. I think Drickis is too strong. He's too thick. I think he's too unorthodox. I think that he can pretty much stuff them takedown attempts. And if not stuff them, maybe hold out longer than Robert Whitaker and do something unorthodox to gain a better position for himself. We've seen him do that. He's actually a decent grappler. In terms of who I think wins that 
that one, I think Drake is to bless. He gets it. But let's just say Hamza Chemayev becomes the UFC champion. And let's just say that the speculation and forget about what Dana said about brushing it under the carpet last weekend saying, of course, he's able to fight. He's fought here before. Stupid, stupid. It's actually on record. If we jump over here to this MMA media uh, article from last October, I highlighted this section here. In an interview with Hamza Chemayev's coach released hours before his fight with Usman, it was confirmed that Hamza was unable to travel freely because of the Russian passport and an ongoing war against Ukraine. There's also the added wrinkle of Kamzat Chemayev's cozy relationship with the Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov. The United States government has heavy sanctions on Kadyrov and his associates thanks to the growing list of international war crimes. This situation going on, the war, it's hard for everyone to travel around the world with a Russian passport. Chemayev's coach told MMA fighting, especially for a Chechen. I won't go into details, but anyone who knows the story and is following what's going on in the world knows that everybody is trying to corner Russia with sanctions. He's living that. Chemayev recently emigrated to Dubai and also received a 10-year visa from Abu Dhabi. He said that he hopes that there's some sort of arrangement coming where Hamzat might be able to travel on some sort of United Arab Emirates travel document. That sounds promising, but even a United Arab Emirates passport might not be good enough if the US State Department says that they know how close Chemayev and Kadyrov are. In fact, Kadyrov's two sons cornered boars on Fight Island. I think that we must take it seriously that there has been massive issues getting into the country. So I think it's only fair that the very left-leaning progressive MMA media ask the same questions of Hamza Chemayev being a future champ as they ask of Sean Strickland, Bryce Mitchell, Kobe Covington, Jorge Masvidal all these guys who lean very much to the right. I think Shaw pulls out a really good point when he says that, is that the face of the UFC going forward? We know for a categorical fact right now that the UFC don't want to promote someone like Sean Strickland. He's got them outlandish, inconsistent views that he just blasts out there. And we know that they don't like that. We've seen it. We've documented it. So are we in a position where they feel more comfortable promoting Hamza Chemayev as a champion with Kadyrov on his left-hand side and his two sons on the right-hand side being his corner man? It's a very interesting question to pose, especially given the fact that the momentum is really behind Hamza Chemayev getting the next title shot now. And then not only that, if you're DDP and Strickland, whoever wins that fight, which they're probably going to do next, whoever wins that fight, you're going to ask that champ to only fight in the Middle East? Well, that ain't fair. Yeah, I don't like the idea of that. And I also don't like the idea of the Sean Strickland, Drake Stuplessis fight actually happening now with all the momentum from Hamza Chemayev and the community surrounding it. So let's say that we are forced to watch Drake Stuplessis versus Sean Strickland. Not the most exciting fight. I think Drake is with the run that he's on and the confidence that he's on. The guy's an absolute badass. I think that he'll go in there and he will run through Sean Strickland this time. But also, we heard him saying in interviews just in the last 24 hours that he doesn't care where he fights you know wherever he wants to do it you know i know he has some traveling issues i don't know the extent of those issues but you know i'll fly wherever we are wherever i need to to get that fight you know, i'll fight him in his in his hometown i don't know where he resides currently but i'll go there and we can fight there that's the fight the fans want to see and you know, for my legacy, that's the fight I want. Whilst I kind of agree with Brendan Schaub's take on, listen, if you're the champion of the UFC, can you not fight where you want to fight? Have you not earned the right to fight in your hometown? And why should you have to fly to Abu Dhabi out into the Middle East? That doesn't make sense. But as we know, and what is becoming more and more evident on Ricky Stuplessis' side is that the guy is a badass. He doesn't want an easy fight. He wants the hardest fight. And when you see him getting physically excited to get into the octagon with Hamza Chemayev, it is something to behold because we don't see that now. We see people ducking and diving, people grabbing a belt, trying to hold on to it for as long as possible, sitting out, looking for rest. He's not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. He wants to get in there and do it. So if you think about the fact that if this fight comes to fruition with Hamza Chemayev and Drikis Duplessis goes in there and does what I think he will do, as in beat him, as in beat him badly, what are we looking at in terms of record, ranking, and just legacy in general? Because Israel Adesanya, Robert Whitaker, Sean Strickland, Hamza Chemayev, if you run through all them guys with a smile on your face, with the most unbelievable shit talk without even trying and you continuously push forward wanting the hardest fights this guy is legit absolutely legit to make these guys go to the middle east is insane because his relationship with a dictator that's what we're doing let's see what these guys do i can't wait dude
It's insane. I can't believe we're talking about this. And I guess that's just one thing that I wanted to bring up in terms of there is a relationship with a dictator. We don't know how strong that man is in his life. We don't know what he makes him do. We do know that Hamza Chimayev, after a serious bout of sickness, wanted to retire, said publicly that he was going to retire. And Kadyrov came out on social media and changed the opinion of Hamza Chemaev and said, no, you're not. The people of Chechnya are looking up to you. You're not retired. In fact, I'm going to send you to a certain place and I'm going to pay for a certain treatment. And then you're going to go and you're going to fight again. So that puts you in a very sticky predicament if you're Hamza Chemaev. And putting all that aside, Hamza Chemaev seems like he's the guy that wants to make as much money as he can for him, his wife, and for his child. And I wish him the best. I want to see the fight between Hamza Chemaev and Drikis Duplessis. I don't want to see Sean Strickland get the absolute dog done on him because of his political opinions but in fairness in terms of interesting exciting fights i want to see drakis go in there i want to see that chad energy go in there and silence everyone once more let me know who you think gets the next title shot sean strickland hamza chemaev let me know if you give two shits about the fact that hamza chemaev could be the new face of the ufc with kadirov in his corner let me know if you care about that at all because if you don't that's fine let's push forward and get this fight on the road Hit like and subscribe and share if any of it makes sense. Cheers.